let's talk about water quality in the Red Cedar River. What we're really struggling with is that we have students that are coming to this campus with this preconceived idea that the Red Cedar River is this terrible resource, that if we touch it we have to get a tetanus shot, that um, nothing can live in the Red Cedar River, and that's absolutely not true. My name is Steve Frank. I'm the Landscape Services Coordinator for the MSU Landscape Services Department. I've been on campus for going on 10 years now. And I guess I come at this with a little bit different perspective in that I lived downstream of this river when I was growing up. So everything that happened here ended up in our backyard there. I just really enjoy the, the natural beauty of this river corridor, um, which was both good and bad when trying to establish the buffer zone. So Michigan State University is located in the Red Cedar River watershed, and this watershed is about 470 square miles, just uh, over 300,000 acres. And we're uh, an integral component of the urbanized area of the Red Cedar River watershed. So what that means is we're working with other jurisdictions in this greater Lansing area, not only in the Red Cedar River watershed, but also the Grand River watershed and the Looking Glass River watershed. And we're all working together on watershed management plans that will ultimately help to protect the water quality in the Red Cedar River, the Grand River, and the Looking Glass River. Grow zones are essentially vegetated areas, so areas that are allowed to have natural vegetation to help slow the flow of water. So what we're trying to do is filter out pollutants. We're trying to catch the water so that we're not having such a big gush of water reach the Red Cedar River. And that allows more infiltration, so the water is allowed to infiltrate into the soil to recharge our aquifers. Uh, less stress on the river because we're not getting a big slug of water all at once. So anywhere where we can put vegetation rather than sealed surfaces, like rooftops, sidewalks, driveways, concrete, asphalt. If you take a walk on your lunch hour or between classes and traverse the length of the river from Hagedorn Road to Kalamazoo, you'll see these vegetative buffers along the river. You'll also see more of, uh, on this campus, other types of vegetation. So for example, near Erickson Hall, we have a rain garden, which is a area of natural plants that allows water to infiltrate. We're going to have larger bio uh, filtration areas, uh, bio retention areas uh, with the farm lane underpass. We have a couple of green roof areas on campus that will have allow for vegetation on the rooftop, which also helps to slow the flow of water to retain the water rather than sending it directly to the river. So some of the more typical urban pollutants, so pollutants from urbanized areas that could end up in the river, are things like um, bacteria from pet waste, from, in some cases, um, human sewage, from waterfowl, um, animals, uh, domestic or wild animals along the river, um, phosphorus and nitrogen from fertilizers, pesticides that we might use on our lawns, um, things like oils and grease from our cars. If we have poorly maintained cars and we've got leaks, we might have transmission fluid leaks, um, any type of um, brake dust and anything that's coming off the car surface. All of those things are what we consider non-point source pollution. It comes from everywhere. It's really hard to quantify. Many people don't realize that the pipes that you see coming out of the river, if you look, you'll notice the what we call the outfalls. Those are pipes that discharge in the river. That is stormwater. So every time it rains, when the snow melts, all of the water that lands on the surface in our urbanized area ultimately ends up in the river. People tend to have the misconception that the water is going to a sewage treatment plant and in some areas that is true but in 
on Michigan State University's campus, we have a separated system. So all of our stormwater is going right to the river. What that means is that all of us, you and me and everybody else on this campus, has to play a role in protecting water. So anytime you dump anything into a catch basin, anytime you dump anything onto the ground, that potentially could end up in the river. We have a lot of people on campus that care deeply about this place and, and the way it looks. And when we do make changes, in some cases what may be considered a drastic change, there's some negative reaction to it. So I spent a good year uh, prior to implementing this just meeting with different constituencies and talking about uh, the why uh, we were going to do this. And I think that went a long way to people accepting it. It was a, uh, it was a very big change. Um, people were used to coming down to the river maybe with their kids and just walking right up to the bank, which they still can do. It's just a matter of walking through uh, some taller grass. This is an amazing natural resource that runs through this campus. If we know that we've got a nice resource, we've got a valuable resource, we're going to be more likely to do things to protect it.